All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It says that we are now live. And so we are going to get into it today. I want for you to go ahead and do as you always do. Let me know where you are watching from. Tell me what's going on. Um, during this whole process, I want for you guys to chime in, ask questions, because we definitely want this to be interactive. You guys know I'm always obsessed with the weather. So wherever you're from, you could also put that down as well if you want to. But we're going to go ahead and jump into it because we have some great information that we want to share. I'm excited about the guests that I have on today because I know this is just going to be an awesome amount of information that you're going to be able to use because everybody can use this information. So welcome to Lessons Beyond the Stethoscope. And here we provide you with all of the health tips and tools that you need so that you can be able to navigate your life. Because what we understand is that life ultimately affects your health. This is episode 13, Healthy Aging, How to Live Gracefully, a Geriatric Physician's Perspective. Now, let me ask you guys this. Are you excited about getting older? Like, seriously, are you excited about like, I don't hear people screaming like, yes, I'm excited. And uh, most people will say, no, I have a lot of my patients that come in and like, you know, getting older is like for the birds. Like they are not excited about this process of their life. And one of the reasons why I feel like people are not excited um, is because of all of the negative stigma. You are concerned about falls and memory loss and the achy joints and all that kind of stuff. The only time I hear people get excited about it is the perks, right? You, you, the retirement. A lot of people, as they get older, then that's retirement <laughs> age. The other thing is that AARP card. Come on, y'all tell me. You know that AARP card is, is where it's at. You get your discounts and stuff. But what we want to do is make sure that once you enter this stage, that you are truly able to enter it gracefully, that you are able to be healthy and to ultimately live your best life. So that's why I'm excited for the guests that we have today. Today we have joining us Dr. Ardarian Pierre. She is a board certified family medicine physician and also a geriatrician. So she completed her residency in family medicine and then did a fellowship in geriatrics or gerontology at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi. And now she serves as the assistant professor of family medicine and geriatrics at UMC. She also works for the Mind Center, where she diagnoses and treats patients with memory loss and cognitive impairment. And her overall passion is basically making sure that patients are able to live their best lives. So you guys know that you're going to get some great information today because Dr. Ardarian Pierre is very well qualified to give us all the good information about geriatrics because the thing about her specialty, there aren't that many doctors that are practicing this. And so you have to get this additional information to kind of know how to treat the special population. So thank you so much, Dr. Pierre, for joining us on today. Thank you so much, Dr. Booth, for having me. I'm super excited about today. You're welcome. Now, listen, before we get too deep into this topic, I want to first discuss the term geriatrics. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. I did not know what a geriatrician was or any of that until like right before I went to medical school, I met a doctor who was actually a geriatrician and we sat down and talked about what she did. But before that, I had no idea like what that field was, what you did. So let us know, like what exactly is a geriatrician? Thank you. So really as a geriatrician, I specialize in caring for and treating patients on average 65 years of age. Some of my patients are a little younger than that, and some of them are a little bit older when they come in. Um, overall, I can serve as your primary care physician, so someone who's, who you see for everything, or as a consultant. So Dr. Booth can call me and say, Dr. Pierre, I need you to see this patient just to make sure their care is optimized. So that is my role. 
Awesome. One of the things that I realized why this is really important and, and the benefits of a geriatrician is because it says that 80 percent of older adults, so 65 and older, have one chronic disease. And by chronic disease, we're talking about high blood pressure, diabetes, things of that nature. And then 70% thereabout have two chronic diseases. And so once you start knowing this and, and realizing things can start to become a little bit more complex, that's where a geriatrician can come into play. So tell me, what are some of the benefits that people can get from having a geriatrician? So to be honest, I always start with saying everyone doesn't need one. I mean, I have 80 year old patients who are still playing tennis, still driving without any fender benders. So everyone doesn't need a geriatrician. But in instances where, like you said, the medical conditions are increasing, the medications are increasing, then our goal is to make sure that we are on the right medications and the doses are correct. And, you know, sometimes patients will say, Dr. Pierre, I'm taking three medicines for my blood pressure, when sometimes we can reduce that to one. So, you know, our goal is, is to make sure that you're walking. So your walking ability, if Patients notice that they are frail or has had balance issues. You know, we can talk about ways to, you know, do we need to exercise more? Do we need physical therapy, et cetera? So those are some of the goals in treatment from our standpoint. Oh, okay. And I like the fact that you said that not everyone will need one. But I know the other benefit, though, that you guys have, because like you said, it's some of the patients that you do see can have a complex medical history on several medications. You see how you can slim it down, things like that. But the other benefit that I noticed that you guys have is time. Some of your visits are a little bit longer than the average PCP because the average PCP has maybe about 15 minutes. Talk to the people and let them know about how much time you guys typically may have with your patient. So let me start by saying, yes, it depends on the type of clinic, the location of the clinic. Some of our visits can be up to an hour and a half, which is a huge benefit because it gives us the time to see the big picture of what's going on with the patient. Um, you know, we encourage family members to come. We get a history during those long visits from everyone involved to know, you know, what mom and dad are doing or what you are doing, what medicines you're taking and why. What did you do for a living? OK, how long did you do that? How long have you been retired and what are you doing every day? So those are a lot of things that we talk about. Um, time, I think, is one of the huge benefits of seeing a, a geriatrician. And, and that's that's what really makes my role important and fun. I like that in that time, it seems you're also developing a relationship Definitely. because you and with the patient and with the family, because we we notice that as you get older, sometimes you may need some help. So you may need family members to come in and help you, you know, take your medicines or whatever it may be. But to say, OK, well, is your daughter going to be able to come to the visit? Can someone, is, who, whoever is helping you out, they can also be involved with this process because there is support that's needed as well. That's right. One of the things that I really try to hone in on is quality of life. More than anything, whatever the conditions are, whatever, you know, even if we're as far as dementia, you know, what are our goals for quality of life for, for our patients? So th that's pretty much what, what we try to do, what we try to focus on. Okay. Now, the other thing that I noticed is since we've talked about, you know, how people are not excited about aging because of certain things that can happen. But both of us, because we are family medicine trained first, our thing is prevention. How can we prevent some of these things from happening? So when it comes to falls, I looked up some information. It says that one out of four people over the age of 65 can fall. They can have, they will have a fall, not can fall, they will have a fall. So that's 25% of that population will have a fall. And then from that, it says that one out of five with that fall that they have can lead to like a hospitalization. And once you have that, a lot of times when we start to see significant declines, 
Um, you're not going to be able to get back mobile as quickly as you want to, things of that nature. So before we even get to that point, how can people prevent falls? What are some things that people have going on in their lives that they're not aware of that you say, okay, if you start eliminating some of this, this can kind of help you from falling. Great question. So the main thing is exercise, 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 staying active. Um, that alone increases, you know, your ability to balance the way you should. We love exercises or activities like yoga or Tai Chi that help focus in on your ability to balance and support yourself. Um, strength training is important too, because we know as we get older, we lose some of our muscle mass. So trying to maintain that is important. Keeping an eye on your vitamin D levels. So a lot of times, even in young folks, we will have low vitamin D levels that we don't even realize. So making sure that we're keeping an eye on that. And if we need to, keeping that at goal. Eating a balanced, healthy diet, ensuring that calcium is included in your diet. Um, optimizing all of your medications. For example, you know, if you've been on a hypertension medicine, whether it's new or whether it's old, and you've noticed side effects like feeling woozy or dizzy when you when you initially take it, that's going to increase the risk of fall. So it's very important to go ahead and get back to your primary care provider to discuss, hey, I'm, I'm having issues with this. We probably should try something else. Same thing with diabetes. So keeping hypertension and diabetes well controlled to reduce your risk of feeling shaky, clammy, lightheaded, whatever, is definitely going to uh, reduce those risks. Excuse me. Another thing is shoes. We don't realize how much the shoes we wear make a difference. Wearing the wrong, wrong size. If they're too large, there's a risk of tripping. If they're too small, there's a risk of tripping. Um, as we age, as we get older, carpet being throughout the home. So the main thing we like to focus on are loose rugs. If you have rugs at your door when you come in or something that can trip you up, there's that risk of fall. And Dr. Booth, like you said, you know, um, falls are definitely one of the number one causes in this age population that leads to uh, death from injury. So wow. that's just a few things. One yep. more thing to add is glasses. If you need glasses, you need to wear your glasses. Um, and if you've gotten new glasses, you know, we have a lot of patients who are using bifocals or trifocals, et cetera. If you can't see out of them, go back to your optom optometrist or your ophthalmologist to let them know, okay, we need to adjust this a little bit. I can't see well out of them. So all these little things that we can do every day and implement are just, just a few things that we can do to pre prevent the chance of falling. I love that because... And people might think, oh, it's, it's not that big a deal. It's not, you know, these are simple things, but these are serious things. Like some people think, oh, they did some big thing to have a fall. I talked to someone in my family recently. They showed me a pair of shoes that they had. And I said, listen, you need to get rid of those. The, and they was like, but I got a good deal on them. I said, listen, is that deal worth you breaking the hip? I, exactly. Because I can tell by the, the grip on them wasn't that great. I said, I can see a fall in your future. And I've had patients who I said, how did you fall? They said, oh, I had these slippers on. A lot of times that's what I hear. I had the slippers on mm -hmm. and they got away from me. So you have to make sure that you have some that have a good grip on them. You have to make sure that, like you said, the carpets. I love that tip about the carpets because there are a lot of rugs that lift up on the sides and people are having mm -hmm. falls and they're having some serious falls. Those rugs that are in your bathrooms, those are giving people some mm -hmm. like because once you trip, what are you going to hit? You can hit your head. I've seen this time and time again. People are tripping on those little rugs and then they hit their head on the sink, on the tub or on the wall. So you have to be able to start looking at those things to make sure they're secure because a fall can be serious. Now, the other thing that because I know that you work at the Mind Center and that is all about memory and stuff like that. And I have a lot of people that say, well, I'm getting a little forgetful. What is like some normal signs of aging? And then where is it where the point where they say, you know what, you actually do need to see your doctor and have this evaluated so that we can make sure that this isn't too severe or whatever. Where, where do you start seeing that? So, you know, the first thing I normally start with is that our memory is just not going to be the same with every day that we are living um, as we age, the memory process is just not as strong as it used to be. You know, that quick 
oh, I used to be able to, you know, add two plus two in, in 0.5 seconds or whatever. That will change. It's just a part, a part of life. Just like our physical, uh, our physical body kind of deteriorates, so does our, so will our brain at some point. It is different for everyone, uh, but it will. So there are a few areas that I specifically look at and listen to when we think about, oh, well, maybe there should be some concern there and maybe we should evaluate you a little bit closely. So just your ability to do everyday tasks. Have you always paid the bills for your home? Have you noticed lately that there's been a difference of your ability to do it? Are you forgetting to do it? Are you paying that same bill three times in a month? That's one thing. So finances, taking a look at financing, being able to do housekeeping things, uh, being able to simply operate the washer and dryer or some some of the little things that we'll see in the beginning that, you know, patients may not even pay attention to your ability to cook. So are you still able to cook those great recipes that your children and your grandchildren love at November uh, at Thanksgiving in November and Christmas time? Or has your family said, you know, Ma, your macaroni just doesn't taste the same. Um, there's something a little bit differently, something a little bit different, excuse me. Are you leaving the stove on? So just your ability to do day-to-day -day tasks, if that changes, then oftentimes um, that gets our attention to say, okay, maybe we should take a, a, a closer look. When it comes to that, and we're knowing that Although as we get older, the mind and everything kind of, there's some things that are going to change mm -hmm. for sure, like you said, but what can we do beforehand? Are there some things that people can do to try to help strengthen or maintain the memory that they do have? Definitely. So always starting with diet, just the habit of eating a heart healthy diet, you know, fruits, vegetables, um, whole wheat and, and grains and fish, lots and lots of fish. Um, there's a lot of research out there and still going. Um, something we particularly focus on is the Mediterranean diet. And it's really not, you know, a diet that's really strict, but it tells you to ch just kind of enjoy these types of food vers foods versus processed foods and high sugar, high sugar diets. Um, another thing is, is what we talked about earlier, just staying active, being active, keeping those, you know, keeping your activity levels up to four and five times a week. Um, another thing is staying engaged, you know, continuing to meet new people and learn new things, whether it's to paint or, you know, we always talk about or we see older folks doing crossword puzzles, but games on the phone, like uh, what are people playing now? Sudoku or mm -hmm. whatever. But anything new, anything where you are engaged in, in learning new things, that's always fuel and, and preservation for your brain. OK, um, health, health, healthy things that you can do is smoking. So if you don't smoke, don't start. If you do smoke, go ahead and stop. And then just going back to the things that we talked about, like hypertension and diabetes, keeping those things controlled, because when they're uncontrolled, again, we're increasing our chance of stroke, which can lead to other issues down the road. So it's really as simple as that, as far as what we can do to stay healthy now and as we get older. Oh, those are great points, because I know a lot of people talk about the crossword puzzles and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and like the mind games and stuff, but the just the basics of diet. And mm -hmm. if you have a, a disease, a, a high blood pressure, diabetes, anything like that, making sure that that is well controlled. Because like you said, if they are not, one, they can increase your risk of, of stroke and stuff. That's kind of the long game of it. Mm -hmm. But the short game is if your sugar levels aren't well controlled, your mind can get foggy. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't really think. I can't really, right. you know, so those things can happen on a, like a day-to-day a -day basis and that can affect you. So I love all of those tips. There's a lot of things that people can just implement now. And you're right about the exercise, like just getting out. So I know there are a lot of people when they retire, they say, I'm going to do the thing. And it's like, okay, what are you going to do? They're looking forward to fishing. They're looking forward yeah. to just relaxing, whatever it is. But I like the point of saying, please stay active. You still need to get out and socialize because that's going to stimulate your brain. You need to get out and walk and exercise, get some fresh air because that is going to gonna still exercise your brain because you're seeing things and you're, you're just moving about. So I love those tips. Those are great, great tips. 
Now, there are some people that say, this is great. And I would love to see, I'm concerned about mama. I'm concerned about myself. Whatever that issue is, then they say, okay, but if I can't do a, see a geriatrician, because I actually Googled the Savannah area to see if we had a geriatrician. And I think I may have been able to find one or two. And if that's the case, all of the people that we talked about, the millions of people in this population is continuing to grow. It's just that we don't have enough geriatricians to serve this population. So then people are like, well, what am I supposed to do? That's if you are supposed to see one. So if you are in that bucket where you say, I think I might need to see a geriatrician, then what else can they do to try to maximize their visits with their primary doctor? Great question. And I'm glad you highlighted again. Just want to emphasize everyone doesn't need to see one. Um, but to when you need to take that approach, just making a list of topics. What are the things that are concerning you most about aging? And then again, remember that I said clinic visits and times vary. So most times in a regular clinic, um, visits may be 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes maybe less. So make that list of topics and just keep in mind, you may be able to only tackle one topic per visit and that is okay. If we, if we tackled my blood pressure and its medicines today, the next time we'll, we'll tackle my diabetes and those medications, et cetera. So whatever is top priority for you, if it is your memory, start with your memory with your primary care provider Keep a list of those things that are concerning you about your memory. I think it's very important to make sure that you are prepared to present the things, the complete picture of what's disturbing you or what's bothering you so that your physician or your provider can better um, ascertain, you know, what's going on. So, and how to initiate a workup and what steps you should take. So I think that's important. Just making that list. Go ahead and bring family members if needed during those visits so that you can properly discuss what you need to and just a little bit of patience because you may not be able to do it in one visit, two or three. That is really good. And because what I've been preaching to everyone, no matter if you're young or old, it doesn't matter in between, it doesn't matter that you're going to have to advocate for yourself in this healthcare system that we have. Mm -hmm. And by advocating for yourself, you're going to have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And by being prepared, it's like you said, you're going to have to have that list and you have to prioritize that list because I do, I will say my older patients will come in with the list, but then there's like seven things on there. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, let's talk about what's most right. important because we've got to figure out what, what is really concerning you because we can always come back. Right. And so unfortunately, in some other systems, it might be a couple of months before you can come in, but you got to make sure that you hit those high points. This is what I'm really concerned about, because they also are wanting to make sure other things are being taken care of for you. So, so you may say, I'm concerned about my memory. I'm concerned about weight loss. I'm concerned about this, this and that. But then they also say, well, I'm concerned. Have you had your colonoscopy? Are you up to date on your vaccines? So they already have a list of things that they want to make sure is taken care of for you to make sure that you're healthy. And then you have your concerns. So you both you guys both have an agenda. And so you have to be able to put that together. And I like that she said, writing it down. The other tip I would give for you, too, and what I've been talking about is keeping a health journal. I have some patients that are fabulous with that. They have like a little notebook and it has all of their doctors in there, has all of the labs that they've had taken. They mm -hmm. have all of their notes. And so then they can say, I saw this doctor on this day and he did this and this is what he changed my medicines to and blah, blah, blah. So then that way, once you get back to your primary, your primary can say, OK, I see all of this. This is what they, they can be up to date now and then they can help you figure out what the next step is. So make sure that you guys do that. Get you a health journal, something, write it down and be prepared when you come to that office visit. Well, Dr. Pierre has given us a lot of tips. I know she's going to come back because I know a lot of people are really interested in, in memory and a little bit more information about like medications and this and that. There's so many topics to cover and we didn't want to overwhelm you today, but I want to ask you, Dr. Pierre, are there any other tips or thoughts that you would like to share on today? The main thing I'd like to say is just remember aging is a blessing. 
to see a new day is, is truly a blessing. Um, and so, you know, I encourage you to keep, keep your focus on that. Secondly, remember those simple habits that I gave you, the little things that we can do every day to, to lead to a, a better aging process. So eating, eating the right things and monitoring our chronic medical conditions and making sure that everything is controlled, exercising. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to throw out one more tip for fall prevention. We see a lot of patients where, you know, in their pantry, their canned goods are way up or their glasses are way up. Get get a, a, a child or spouse, whomever, to bring everything down to your level so that you can easily reach and grab it. We see so many patients who have fallen off of a step ladder or, you know, something, they a step stool that they've stepped up on just to grab something. Um, so just making sure that we implement that because that is a huge risk as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on today, for sharing such great information. You guys, if you have questions or you want to continue to find out information, you can follow Dr. Pierre um, at Pierre Docs, D-O-C-S. And that is on Instagram. So if you have any other like, oh, I wonder about this. I didn't think about that. Be sure to follow her or to reach out to her that way. She'll be more than willing to give you some information at the end of this you know I always will put out some of the the tips that she talked about to give you kind of like a brief overview make sure that you share this because this is as we know it's it's a team it's a whole family support system and there are caregivers that are involved and all of that and make sure that you share this with other people and with your loved ones because these are some things that can literally save a life Honestly, like these small changes that you're making every day can literally be the difference between life and death. So make sure that you share this, you continue to follow. And until next time, we will see you guys. Take care. Thank you.